Prior to D-Day in June 1944, the Allied forces staged a number of rehearsals of the landings, all in top secret. One of these was called Operation Tiger, and it would end in absolute tragedy. But because of the secrecy, very few people knew about it. Then, in the 1970s, one man uncovered evidence of the event and fought to bring the story to light. Nisha McSweeney met his son. The incident took place off the Devon coast near Slapton Sands. Operation Tiger may have remained a forgotten moment in history if it wasn't for the amateur archaeological sleuthing of a local man named Ken Small. I'm meeting his son, Dean, to find out more. When did your father first begin to suspect that there was something out there? He was beachcombing, mm. and he came across things like tunic buttons, empty shell cases, identity bracelets, oh, various, right. various parts of identity bracelets, all these bits, knives and forks, spoons, parts of them, yeah. and he thought, well, this is weird. Why would this be on a beach? A local fisherman added to the mystery. He told Ken about a spot just out from the beach where their nets would snag on something large underwater. In the summer of 1974, Ken persuaded a diver friend to go down and take a look. My dad okay. took him out in a boat, he dived down, he came up and he said to my dad, it's a tank. And my dad said, well, what, an oil tank, water tank? He said, no, it's like an army tank. And my dad just thought, this is crazy, how can this be? Ken started to search local records and military archives for answers. It was then that he stumbled across a wartime exercise, codenamed Operation Tiger. Operation Tiger was carried out in April 1944. It was one of a number of practice exercises involving troops from Britain, the US and Canada that all took place in preparation for the Normandy landings. 30,000 US troops were sent to Slapton Sands to rehearse their part in D-Day. All of this stuff was completely covered up, so okay. there was very little evidence as, as to what went on, the, the actual exercises themselves. Determined to find out more about the tank, in May 1984, Ken took amateur maritime archaeology to a new level. With the help of friends and local divers, he raised the tank off the seafloor. They got a big bulldozer, they strapped a cable to it, and they started to pull it along the concrete slipway. And amazingly, the track started to turn. It's incredible. Yeah, and then all the crustacea and stuff that had grown on the tank over years of being under the water all started to break away and crumble off. And you can actually see grease still on the thing. It's just amazing. The tank was immediately jet cleaned and sprayed with rust preventer to protect it from decay. So, this is it. This is the tank. It's enormous. It's yeah. amazing to think about this under the water, and of course they were snagging their nets in it. Yeah. Just... Dean, this is crazy for me. So I'm used to when I when I dig up, you know, iron objects from the Iron Age, they come up as like really crusty, corroded things. It's hard to tell what they are, but this is in fabulous condition. Ken had recovered an American amphibious Sherman DD tank. So what happens is all around the tank, there's this flotation collar and it's raised with compressed air upwards and it forms a complete skirt around the tank. Fantastic, so it's a fully amphibious tank. Tank, boat, tank. While the DD tank was ahead of its time, it could be quite unreliable. Several of them, including the one Ken raised off the seafloor, were known to have sunk during the D-Day rehearsals due to mechanical faults. But as Ken investigated further, he discovered that Operation Tiger wasn't just blighted by technical problems, something far more deadly had occurred. By early 1944, the Germans knew Allied forces were planning to invade Nazi-controlled France. They just weren't sure where or when. By listening in to the Allied radio chatter, they got wind of Operation Tiger. On the 28th of April, 1944, nine German e-boats were sent out on patrol and headed for the coast of Devon. Armed with torpedoes, these were highly manoeuvrable, deadly attack craft. 
That night, Allied ships taking part in Operation Tiger came under attack. Two US tank landing ships were sunk and three more badly damaged. More than 700 US servicemen drowned or died of hypothermia as they waited to be rescued. In 2012, two wartime shipwrecks known to lie off the Devon coast were formally identified as the two tank landing ships, or LSTs, that were sunk during Operation Tiger. As part of a project to grant the wreck special status, maritime archaeologist Graham Scott is heading out to survey them. What's really important about these wrecks is that they're associated with D-Day, and they're associated with practices for D-Day. Historic England have asked um, us to investigate these wrecks for them and to advise them what's uh, left of them and how important they are. Now anchored over the wrecks, they prepare to send down a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. Equipped with sonar and specialist low-light cameras, the team can stream a live feed from 50 metres down, direct to the control room. OK, mate, that's us. we got visual. We'll just work out what we're doing. Yeah, let's orientate ourselves yeah. and let's move along yeah, to move. the west. Today, Graham is concentrating on one of the ships. He wants to assess what state it's in, what equipment it was carrying, and any potentially live munitions still on board. We are wondering whether we have found a gun here. We are rather hoping that this is evidence of the ship's armament. We could be wrong. We start tethering easy, tethering easy. One thing we have to be careful with in a wreck like this is the uh, presence of ammunition. We don't touch any of that. We uh, back the ROV away to a safe distance. We have no real idea whether these things are still viable. We've got to treat them as, uh, uh, as though they could still potentially uh, explode if we blunder into them. Moving along the boat, the ROV camera captures a lifeboat crane, a cargo net, and the engine. The hull is upside down. These were very shallow drafted vessels and they tended to capsize when they sank. We now know that on the night of the attack, chaos ensued. The men on board the landing ships thought that the firing initially was part of the exercise. And it was only when one of the ships was torpedoed and they saw this massive explosion that they realised they were actually under attack. And then all hell breaks loose. Everybody starts firing everywhere. Very confusing. Following the deadly Nazi attack, the Operation Tiger disaster was quickly covered up. It remained largely unknown for decades until Ken Small found and raised his tank. While the tank was not sunk in the enemy attack, it now stands as a permanent memorial to all the US servicemen who lost their lives during the D-Day rehearsal. Ken Sundin still has his father's collection of artifacts. Okay. These didn't come out of the tank. Yeah, they did, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they did. This one here is is a rangefinder, and this, I believe, is is used to um, work out the elevation um, for the main gun, the main gun, the main gun in the turret of the tank. Yeah, line of fire. Line of fire, Gosh. yeah. In recognition of Ken's determination to bring the story of Operation Tiger to light, and remember the American soldiers who lost their lives, he received a letter of gratitude from the president. Dear Mr. Small, yes. on behalf of all Americans, thank you for your kind and generous efforts. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a really important story that deserves to be much more widely told. I mean, it's, it's a big kind of part of um, prepare, the preparations for D-Day, which we just hadn't heard about. It took someone like Ken to, to get that story out there and, and to give those people who died and their families and the survivors um, a, a voice and something to kind of remember it by.